123. You know, I'm still not quite sure what the gambit is here, but one out there idea that comes to mind is maybe he plans to die. If the king does not have enough of a fine touch to defeat Netero without going too far and killing him, maybe there's a parallel lesson there for society and how he plans to rule. You can't even handle this with any degree of delicateness. How would you possibly expect to rule all of humanity? We get yellow and purple flame. The deviation from the normal <laughs> blue and orange flame. <laughs> Hunter Hunter, always subversive. Netero sure is a crazy one. <laughs> you just know that part of him loves this. Centipede X and X memory. Oh no, don't get away. I'm probably going to get distracted immediately by whatever else is going on. Into the garage. Yeah. I'm such a monster for not being able to point blank assassinate my lobster cousin. Step three, cry. This is definitely part of the mission itinerary. Um, nothing to see here. Just keep it moving. <laughs> I just kept right going. Right on going. It's especially meaningful and poignant given what's happened in the last couple episodes since then. We're not fighting for Ant vs. Human anymore, like I've said. Step four, get pinned in the monitor room by Welfin. Alternatively, it's like, do you think I'm a loser? <laughs> Does my life have any value? Do you think I'm overdoing it with a thong? Do you think this thong makes me look cool or desperate? Wait, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, non-fatal. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't really take wealth in as a threat. I, I want to know what he was going to ask. Probably was the allies thing, but... That's it? Maybe he also doesn't have the will to kill. Oh no! <laughs> what in the Oogie Boogie Man? Is he really made of insects and centipedes? Is the parasite getting parasited? Alright, this is sort of a safeguard, I guess, for people not answering questions. Okay, one of those things is way worse than the other. I don't really know, but this feels like a, a misreading on both of their parts. It doesn't feel like they're enemies. They're both just assuming the worst. Welfin doesn't even have a clear side or loyalty. The Kogo kind of in the space where when you take on a new philosophy at first, when you hear something that changes your perspective significantly, in exploring it, you go a little bit too deep into it. You forget that life is such a difficult, intricate balance of things. There is no one solid path or answer. He doesn't need to kill Bravada. In fact, it's a relief to me that he didn't. He doesn't need to kill Welfin. He doesn't need to die by centipedes. Is he deliberately missing or is he just a terrible shot? Yeah, good. How about we just de-escalate a, a little bit? Oh, that looked terrible. They're just fully out. I don't want to call to... Well, like this. Well, Finn! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. See, there's something weird there, like why would he be willing to take his own life so easily and not Bravada's? And I don't mean that in the direction of he should kill Bravada if he's willing to go this far. I mean that he should extend the same humanity towards himself. I was just thinking about how it's really difficult to talk about anything relating to humanity in a way that's useful because such a wide spectrum exists. So for every time you say we should be more like this, there's another side that should be less like this. You know, like if you talk about anxiety, some people should definitely be less anxious. Some people should perhaps be more anxious. There's this very fine razor thin line that we're trying to walk when it comes to traits and outlook. And a lot of the skill is not so much in 
the thing itself in the degree or amount, but in the skill of adaptation, wise usage of all the various facets of things. I say that as a disclaimer because some people should maybe be less self-centered. Some people should extend more empathy to other people and creatures. That being said, into this situation, I heard this idea that kind of stung, which is that specifically for pet owners, people who will do anything for their pet, you know, go to great lengths to take them to the, the vet if things go wrong, if they're ill in any way, will put them as their highest priority. Yet won't take care of themselves, you know, won't go to the hospital, will sacrifice their own health. There's something beautiful in there, right? But there's also something potentially sad in there, depending on what it is and where it comes from. Like, do you not think you have the same value as a person? Do you not deserve the same care? You're happy to give, but feel terrible at receiving. You understand it's a gift to you to be able to give to people, but you don't understand how it's a gift to others to give to you. What is this self-inflicted sense of punishment? Are you trying to right some cosmic wrong you feel that has happened with your existence? Do you feel it's selfish to gain or to have nice things happen to you or to receive nice things or to be loved? Is it because it's terrifying that if you accept something that maybe you could be good and maybe there's a higher standard for yourself now and maybe you can have hope, which means you also can be disappointed massively? The call goes so self-sacrificial for someone so warm-hearted. And it's, it's for Kalua, right? But the instinct I've had and what I've said in a bunch of moments now is that it's beautiful you want to give to Kalua. Kalua wouldn't want this for you. It works both ways. We got ourselves a good old East score two standoff. All right, there you go, there you go. Unnecessary. Definitely proves your point. I know the pain is going away and it's getting better, but you're surprisingly calm for someone with centipede arms sticking out of your skull. <laughs> I knew I would fail. <laughs> That's wrong reading. <laughs> it's funny that Welfin has this reaction from Ikago in the same way people had the reaction to Pito. <laughs> Ikago is Welfin's Pito. That is kind of sad. He might lose all his hair. Yeah, can you get rid of the bullet holes in my body? This acting. Opens one eye to look. <laughs> I guess you just have centipedes in your head now. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he actually did. How do you get him out? That's Uvu getting all over again. Maybe the solution is to drink a lot of alcohol. They are. That's some deep reflection from Welfin. He's just not cut out for this life. That's not who he is. What are you fighting for? Watch us be old friends. Oh, he just gave him a lie detector. I was once a wolf, peeing on trees. There's one of the guards. I think we saw that before, right? It's a tough thing to be born into. <laughs> Life is hard enough without be being, being born into an ant colony as a human. And now you're just a wolf with a thong? She's so horrifying looking. Just so many levels. Poor Welfin. It's a very demon slayer. Oh, yeah, I remember Gyro. We all are curious what happened to Gyro. It's very unclear. The centipedes died when he hit the truth. 
really nice for you that they just dissipated into smoke, better than having just centipede corpses in your head for a while. It's a surprisingly touching journey for Wuffin, but I definitely didn't expect. It's interesting that he said his parasitic thing reveals his true nature, because I don't think that's really true. I don't think that was his true nature at all. I think this is probably his true nature. A lot of what we've seen up to this point is things piled on top of his pain as a kid. It's funny that in their interaction, Ikalgo was the one framed as the one resisting, but actually it was Welfin who was resisting, and it got better and better as he started unraveling himself. There were questions he wanted to ask himself that he couldn't. <sighs> I guess in that sense, his power did reveal part of who he really is. <laughs> Thank you, Akago, for shooting me. I was the easy target. こう、どうか知らねえが。ああ。ゴエ軍に捕まって前に連れた人間が一人いたな。That's <laughs> Waffen wins a victory for Waffen. Another unlikely and success story. It's unlikely to be coincidental that so much of this is people overcoming base instincts to higher faculties, higher cognition, deeper thinking, empathy, mutual respect, things that are not just about immediate selfish animal needs. That sort of unlocks them and feels like a victory. And that's what we saw with Yupi. Yupi, interestingly, although maybe it's just purely for aesthetic purposes, explicitly stated to be the only one that is the result of like all mythical animals. Yet there's that great humanity that came out of him. There's something in here, or at least something I'm reading into, about how there's not really that much of a distinction. It's not beast versus man. It's man and its various components sort of vying for power. So increasingly this arc feels to me like a battle of what wins amongst humanness. Poor Palm. What is this gonna look like? What is this gonna be? Oh, she looks all right. A little fishier than I remember, but it's just Palm with scales. What does this mean? Oh. Is this, a, is this a glow up? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I, maybe you don't need to find Pam. Maybe Pam will find you. Pam, one of the few people who managed to go up the stairs. The depth of her love was that strong. Or her infatuation. Speaking of animalness, what comes down the stairs is a mystery and a bit of a concern. If I'm thinking about this correctly, it feels like she's outdated. Whatever they had planned for her was part of their original schematic for what the world would be, which I don't know if it even applies anymore. Would they even still do the reckoning or whatever it was called? The purge, given what they've experienced in the last 20 minutes?